Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm going to be checking out the FSP Hydro TI Pro Series power supply, specifically the 1000 watt version. They also have an 850 watt version available. I did receive this sample, but I want you to know that any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product or you want to find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Here's a look at the retail box and packaging. Everything looks great. They walk you through some key features on the front we have our tech specs on the side and the back you'll see our nice cable layout here showing us everything that's included i love that breakdown so some of the key features you may have noticed on the box this is now pcie 5.0 ready atx 3.0 spec this has 150 millimeter form factor so they're advertising the power density here 80 plus titanium rated 10 year warranty you also see right here that they're showing japanese capacitors 450 volt 105 degrees celsius high durability on the back they have that whole full list of key features they're showing you the new connector for your 4000 series gpus right there so front and center highlighting that atx 3.0 and pcie 5.0 readiness now let's go ahead let's open this up and see what's inside here are all the contents first up we got our product literature consisting of our power supply manual followed by our installation instructions for our pcie 5.0 cable right here be sure to follow those instructions to make sure you don't have any issues also that cable's rated for 600 watts if you're wondering you'll see out of that literature we also have some stickers here two different colors for you next you'll see we have all of our cables power cable and then all of our power supply fully modular cables here we also have a nice carrying case and bag to store all of our cables you'll see we have a hardware kit with some cable ties screws looks like we got another header right there too and then moving right along you'll see we have the power supply unit let's look at this in more detail here's your close-up of the power supply you'll see on the top we have additional specs and product info we'll flip it around to the side you'll see we have their logo and branding same can be said for the other side our fan at the bottom and then you'll see on the very back side here power never ends toggle on and off switch and then we have our eco mode on and off button right there and we have our wall plug connector. And now we'll look at it from the other side. You'll see we have their logo and branding again, the Hydro TI Pro with all of our cable connection options with our PCIe 5.0 clearly labeled for us right there. So everything easy to read and see to make sure you get it all connected properly. All right, here's your close up of our next gen cable for you GPU enthusiasts out there. Take a look at it. You'll see both sides of it there. Get a good feel for the length two of the cable right there. It feels very thick. Obviously, you're looking at, I believe it's 16 gauge wires. And again, this one's rated for 600 watts. So you 40, 90 users out there, I'm looking at you. There you go. You got a nice single cable way to connect everything. All right, before installing the power supply, I love to put it through our power supply testing tool here just to make sure everything is uniform right out of the box to get a feel for that build quality. So blue is great. This is what we want to see right here. 5 to 5, 12 to 12, 3.3 to 3.3, 12.1 to 12, 5 to 5, and a PG score of 159 milliseconds that pg score you want to see that between 100 and 500 everything else is right where it's supposed to be this is for our 24 pin connector for our motherboard let's move right along to our next cable our pci cable here 12 to 12 that's perfect you'll see cpu 12 to 12 also perfect and then we have our um lovely sata power here so we're showing 5.1 to 5, 12 to 12, and 3.3 to, you guessed it, 3.3. So everything looks well within range. Great to see all of that working right out of the box to proper spec. Now let's go ahead, let's get this power supply unit installed. We got our PC built with our power supply installed. Everything turned out great. Super simple to install the power supply. Let me give you a close up looking at everything and how we installed it and where we made our connections. Looking at the front of the build first, we'll see all the different power supply cables and where they connect to the different components in this build. First up, let's look at the GPU connection right there. Again, just a single cable. Really nice, super convenient. That's connected to our RTX 3080 GPU. 
And then moving right along, you'll see our motherboard power cable connection right there. And then we'll move around and you'll see our CPU power cables connected right there in the back to the left of the mag branding. Now we'll look at the back of the PC to see the power supply installed right here with our power cord plugged in. We have eco mode off, but you can easily toggle that on or off and our main power right there. You'll see with this particular case, at least a lot of other holes lined up too. So we have multiple mounting points and options depending on how we want to get that installed. And here's a look at the very back. So up here, we'll start in this corner. That's our CPU power coming in. We have that cable routed down and around. Try to peek in the bottom to get a feel for how everything's connected. You'll see that's our GPU cable right there, main motherboard cable. And that's it for this one. We just have a really simple build with just our motherboard taking up the two plugs then the CPU take up the two plugs and then our GPU cable right there. So there's the GPU coming around. Here's the motherboard coming up and in. So very simple and clean installation. Now let's get to the good stuff. So we're currently maxing out our system right here with the CPU and the GPU. Currently our CPU is showing 137 watts at 100% utilization and our GPU is showing 314 watts at 99% utilization. Everything's up and running stable. We're five minutes into our 30 minute test, maxing it out. No issues at all. Everything's just up and running and humming along. Oh, you know we're getting the FLIR camera out to check this cable connection with our GPU. So again, this has been stressed under a max load, pushing over 300 watts into our RTX 3080 right here. Just wanted to show you what we're working with. And let's go on to the card itself. Substantially warmer. There we go, right at the connector. Super fascinating to see that. Starts to cool off. And then you'll see, still warm, but drastically cooler there. Can look at the motherboard cable too. Nice and cool. I don't know if we can reach to the CPU. Oh, they're in there. They're tucked away. They're going to be nice and cool as well. Right in there. Very similar to the motherboard. Cable hookup with the GPU. Got that heat flowing through here. Plenty of juice as that thing's being maxed out. We're nearing the 20 minute mark under full load. No issues at all here. Again, CPU right around that 130, 131 watt range and our GPU holding steady at 315 watts. Buzzing right along, no issues with the stability of this power supply. All right, so people always wanna know how loud the power supply is. This is very difficult to measure because we have the system maxed out, which means all the other fans and things are running. So it's not gonna be noticeable. You'll hear your other fans, exhaust, maybe even your AIO before you'd ever hear anything from the power supply. For those still interested, what I did was I actually slid the computer over, put this up right underneath as close as I could to the fan and the power supply, and we're showing 51.3 decibels as our max readout. But again, that's still taking in all the room noise, not necessarily the fan noise. When I put my ear down there, I can't even hear anything. So just take it for what it is. It's gonna run really quiet. I'd say near whisper quiet. And don't forget, you also have that eco mode you can toggle on or off depending on if you want to control the fan that way. All right, now it's time for a little field trip where we're going to check the power settings here. So we have it plugged in. The computer's at idle. Currently, we're at 121.4 volts. Let's go see 0.56 amps. Our low watts, 63.2. And our high watts of 130.2. Again, this is all just at idle. Now let's go ahead, let's max it out and see what we get. All right, we're back with the PC under a full load for the CPU and GPU. Let's see what we're working with. Currently, we're getting about 542 watts. Then you'll see our volts, 119. Amps, 4.57. Our low still 63.2 and our high of 548.4. But again, we're hovering right around that. 
right now under that full load coming out of the power supply. So still have plenty of headroom here for the particular build that we have for this particular supply, which is nice. Now, let me share with you my final thoughts after using this FSP power supply. First thing I wanna say is this is my first experience and impression with their power supplies. Typically, I use power supplies from Corsair, EVGA, Cooler Master, and Be Quiet. So it's nice to have another one in the mix. Very quiet, plenty of cables that are long enough for different cases that you might encounter with your build. I really like the form factor of this power supply at that 150 millimeter mark. It's nice and compact, so it's great to have some of that space savings, because again, just depends on how you're trying to fit it in with your build. That might be something that gravitates you towards this particular unit. Obviously, PCIe 5.0 ready. We tested that out with our cable here at 350. 15 watts, no issues there at all with that. So I expect this power supply to last for years to come. The good news is we have that really nice warranty with this unit. So heaven forbid, if something does happen, we will be protected. Now, I think my favorite feature with this particular unit is the eco mode option. Basically, you can flip that on or off. When you have it activated, when you turn eco mode on, the fan will not operate until the load is over 50%. That's nothing new or revolutionary. Most power supplies offer some sort of similar feature, but usually, in my experience, they don't give us the ability to turn that on or off. So I really like that we have that functionality and it's just a super simple, really small switch on the back. So I'm really happy with the design of this overall and having that eco mode feature. So far, so good, but I guess time will tell.